Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my shop here for another day with this radio. Now, yesterday uh, I ended up determining that the speaker field coil is probably on its way to overheating or becoming hotter than would be desirable. After about an hour's operation here, I was measuring, I think it was 50 degrees C, I'm not exactly sure now, but enough to make me concerned that uh, letting this set operate for hours, uh, probably not a very good idea. So, and the reason for that is that's not the original speaker, that's a speaker from another radio, and the field coil resistance is going to be something, uh, uh, apparently, something other than what's expected. Uh, in this radio. The radio is looking for a 600 ohm field coil. So I'm going to measure the resistance of this one and we're going to see what we've got. My guess is it must be much higher than 600. Um, I want to take a guess. 2400. 2500 sounds, that doesn't sound very precise. 2400 ohms. That's my guess. <laughs> Why am I guessing that? Well, it's dropping too much voltage so the resistance must be higher then uh, and it must be significant so we're going to do it with this meter here my allen meter this was sent to me by a kind viewer named allen okay now so the field coil is plugged in over here and I should pull the plug out here on the radio just for It's better to have the plug out while I'm doing stuff like this. So I'm going to pull one leg of the uh, field coil lead out. There it is. Okay, I'm just going to put this on here, hold it with my hand. Da 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 da. 17. Well, I said 24, so I, I was way high, come to think of it. So 600. It's looking for 600 and it's finding 1800. That's three times as much. So an interesting question here is, can I parallel this guy with a resistor and uh, reduce the effective resistance, but still maintain enough current going through the speaker to operate the speaker properly, enough current to generate the magnetic field the speaker needs? Um, the answer is probably yes, because right now the amount of current flowing through that speaker is limited by the speaker's resistance. So it's actually not taking the current that this radio really wants to deliver. So if I allow some of that extra current that the radio wants to deliver to get past the field coil, there's still likely to be enough current flowing in the field coil. Is that logical? It sounded good to me anyway. <laughs> and what's my alternative? So what, what kind of resistance would I put in there? Uh, first, um, it, well, it's got to be it's got to be something with, uh, with, with with some ability to uh, to uh, su sustain uh, heat. Sorry about that. I'm thinking about something else while I'm talking. Um, and could it be a wire wound resistor? Most of my high wattage resistors are wire wound guys. Uh, wire wound resistor. I mean, there's a field coil is basically a big wire wound resistor. Really, that's what it is. What if I use a uh, wire wound real resistor? Would the wire winding cause a problem? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. If anything, it's just more inductance. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I think considering you know the size of the coil and the field coil compared to a little bit of wire wrapped around a resistor, how, how can that be an issue? So and then, what wattage would I want to put on there? So I had my hand on the speaker. I felt the heat and measured the temperature. It doesn't really help me know how many watts are going on in here. Now here's something that here's a little bit of information that maybe is going to floor you. This floored me when I when I learned this. Let's suppose you're superhuman and you fly to the sun, but you're really super duper human. You fly into the sun, right into the middle, right down into the center where all that nuclear stuff is going on. Kapow, boom, kapow. And you cut out 
a one meter cube of the sun and you bring it back here oh my god don't get it near me you bring it back here and you take it into your your lab and you're going to examine this thing the first thing you want to know is how much heat is coming off that thing oh yeah a piece of the sun here how much heat is coming off it and the correct answer is roughly the same amount of heat as a similar pile of compost huh <laughs> huh compost gets a little warm doesn't it compost gets warm inside because of the bacteria and stuff and it generates heat at about the same rate as the center of the sun the shocking fact is the number of times that uh, two atoms collide in the sun and produce a, a reaction a, a exothermic nuclear reaction is very 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 rare we, we I, I used to think of the sun as you know in the middle going like that but it's not it's something like, and I don't have the right numbers, but if you watch enough videos, you'll hear what I assume is the right numbers. Something like 10 billion collisions need to happen before one of them will go off as a nuclear reaction inside the core of the sun. So you got a chunk of the sun, one meter square, producing as much heat as the uh, as a uh, uh, pile of uh, pile of dung. <laughs> okay, uh, how does the sun get that hot? Well, if you made a pile of dung the size of the sun, it would get as hot. Now, is that really true? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe a, a sun-sized pile of dung, maybe it wouldn't get as hot as the sun and break out. And I don't. I don't know about that. So I think that's interesting. Now, thinking about the speaker. So what's going on in the speaker? So there's a very small amount of heat being produced in the speaker, uh, in the resistance of the speaker. But over time, that small amount of heat can raise the temperature of the of the uh, uh, fill coil up and up and up and up and up and up until it's as hot as the center of the sun. Well, it's not going to get that hot because it's losing heat. Right? There's heat coming off it, so it's obviously going to rise up to some stable amount. Some asymptotical curve is going to come up and hit a maximum. Now, where were we yesterday on that curve? Were we down here or were we way up here? I don't know. Seemed to me we're up pretty close to the top. That's what I would guess at 50 degrees C, but maybe not. Maybe that thing's on its way to 90, for all I know, over time. It would take quite a bit of time. Plus, it depends upon the circumstances of the speaker. Probably the the uh, the, the you know airflow, all that stuff. Probably this pretty much the same sitting here on my bench as it is in the back of the radio. It's probably not a lot different. So probably what happens here is what would happen if the radio is put back together in its cabinet. Even if the cabinet's pushed up against the wall, like there's, there's nothing airtight about it at all, so there's going to be a bit of airflow and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. Um, resistor paralleling it. Why not try... Well, how many watts? That's where I was at. How many watts? Well, let's see. We currently have... Uh, what was it? Two two fifty on the supply voltage, and uh, I sound like a boat. At least one hundred and fifty volts dropping across that uh, speaker. I can't remember now. If I even measured it. Uh, it's a lot. Well, that voltage is going to change a lot when I put a parallel resistor in. If I put a resistor in the same value, like let's say seventeen hundred ohm resistor. We're going to cut the re overall resistance in half. So that'd become 800 ohms. That's, hey, that's pretty close. 850 ohms. That's pretty close to 600. Then that would split the current half and half. I guess the question is, would it allow more current through? Well, of course it would. Would it? Would it? Well, the only way to do this is to hook it up and find out, for crying out loud. That's the only way to do this. So, I can do it right here, in fact. This is a handy spot. So, I think I'm going to do that. I'm thinking I'm going to take a resistor, it's roughly uh, 1,700 ohms. We're just going to divide it in two. Okay, I'm going to look for... And then what, what was the wattage? I never finished the wattage discussion. So, if it's dropping, let's say, 100 volts, which is still a lot, but let's say it's doing that, 100 volts, and you had a milliamp going through it, you'd have 0.1 watts, I think. Is that right? So it doesn't sound like it's going to dissipate a lot of heat. I mean, if I'm wrong in that calculation by a factor of 10, it's 1 watt. 
So I put a five watt resistor here, we can monitor it. That's what I'm gonna do. Five watts at around 1700 ohms. And hunt around quite a while to find one here. Here's a resistor, 1800 ohms. Uh, looks like a five watt resistor. It doesn't say on it what it is. And the meter says Seventeen seventy-three. Isn't that an important date? Seventeen. Okay. Um, that's almost exactly the same then as the as the uh, hill pile. So that'll, that'll do just what I'm saying. It'll, we'll just divide it all in two here. So I'm going to mount this in here. I'm going to solder it in. On the assumption that this is going to be a good thing to do. Uh, how do we tell if this is working good? The speaker still works, sound still coming out, volume not lost, this resistor not overheating, and more uh, voltage appearing in the radio. So I've got to be ready to measure the voltage in the radio. And what, what could go wrong here? What could go wrong? I don't think a lot can go wrong, as long as I've soldered the resistor into the right place. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't need this. I need that. Um, I yeah I, I don't think a lot would go wrong. In fact, you know I could clip this, clip this right into place, and I don't have to worry about. And, and so what am I going to measure now? I could measure B plus on the output side of the uh, field coil. So, who? Um, output side of the field coil. So one side's got a resistor on it, the other side, well, who knows, it's just a wire disappearing into the radio. Um, another place would be on top of this capacitor. I think this is a good spot here, actually. So this will give us the maximum reading. Last time, what was it? What was it last time? What did we get last time? Um, um, that's not heavy enough. We got two fifty. This is the input side. We got two fifty here. It's no use. Not here. I don't want to be here. I'm going to have to guess that uh, this is the output side here of the field coil, and that's my that's my my guess. So we see this come up to two fifty. We don't know for sure that I got this right. So at that point, I will I will read the other. What am I worried about here? Um, I haven't, <laughs> worried I haven't soldered in. I haven't soldered in the resistor yet. That, that that's a problem. I'll do that. Just thinking more about what effect this might have. Um, you know, there's really no inductance in this, I imagine, of any significance here. And uh, I'm going to be bypassing the inductor, the field coil. That's going to be less filtering, isn't it? So could that mean more hum? Could that be a consequence of doing this? I'm going to make the set hum. Now at the same time, I'm installing new capacitors here. This is a big one I put in here. And a lot of radios, you know, once they got rid of the field coil, what did they do? They used a resistor and big capacitors on either side. Hot resistor in the middle with big capacitors. Now this radio has small capacitors with a field coil in between. Soon to have a resistor paralleling it. So. Uh, yeah, I think this could increase the hum or create a hum where there wasn't one. Now, this radio has a hum bucking coil in the speaker. Well, it it depends upon the speaker I put in there now. Uh, I, th I think the one I put in there also has a, a hum bucking coil. The hum bucking coil delivers a hum signal to the speaker, the speaker voice coil, uh, 180 degrees out of phase with the uh, hum that's being produced uh, in the rest of the radio from the power supply. And so it's sort of like a last... I'm, I'm going to try to solder this with my voltmeter. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying. That's okay. That's okay. I need the sterile cockpit sort of thing going on here. I only talk about what I'm doing. That's boring though. I'm soldering some stuff here. Well, 
all the smoke. I must have run my soldering iron into some plastic or something because it's the smoke is coming from the soldering iron. you're wondering, I, I, I do have a little bit of, uh, of uh, sandpaper. I sand the leads off before doing this because this, this resistor is not new by any means. This is an NOS. NOS from Parts Unknown. Yeah, I want to stand this resistor off a bit too. In case it gets warm. I, I suppose it will, it will get warm. It's bound to get warm. I did put it back already. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, the antenna's on. It's probably not switched to down here though. So I'm gonna stop for a bit, drink a little coffee, switch the antenna on. We're gonna operate the set, make the voltage readings, and see if this was a really tech, check the temperature or check the temperature of the speaker. Well, this thing will heat up quick to its temperature. And you're hearing me out of one channel only, are you? Okay, we'll fix that. I have wiring for Well, I'll deal with that too. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, I think we're ready here. I've got the sister soldered in. I've got my thermal gun at the ready, or thermal viewer rather, at the ready. I also have one of those thermal guns, but this is a lot more fun. So of course, nothing is hot in here. So you get different colors showing up, but it could be because of an effect called emissivity. Not, not every object that's the same temperature emits the same amount of radiation, of thermal radiation. Some objects emit more, maybe because of their color or the kind of paint on them or whatever it is. And so if you're going to try to tell the temperature of something, you need to know its emissivity. And I think the highest is 100. I think 100 means 100. <laughs> and most, uh, most things are 95, 90, 85, stuff like that. So the fact that I can look in here and see what looks like some things are warmer than others uh, is like, like this right here. Let's see if you can see my finger there. Um, this is up here. For some reason, it wants to see this corner as being a little warmer. It's probably emissivity. It's probably the way the light is for the uh, the uh, this metal. Uh, emits radiation that's that's what I want to say so okay but there's nothing hot in there of course I haven't had it set on I have the antenna switched on the antennas connected the radio's on some band what's on it's on broadcast band volume down okay uh, volt, voltmeter at the ready where's the voltmeter it's not at the ready it's falling down here here we go what am I doing with the voltmeter? A um, voltmeter I want to measure here, input, and then measure output, one of those two sides. Got this in parallel. 
Yes, it's correct. Fooling around with the power supply here, you know, you know, if you're going to make a mistake, you better become aware of it <laughs> before you fully implement the disaster. I don't think any, I don't think any disaster is coming here. I'm going to start this off with the dim bulbs and switches on. Yeah, here we go. You, you might say, oh, Jim, you're overly cautious, but can you really be overly cautious? Can, can that really happen? There's the dim bulbs going back there. Okay, we're on the 500 volt scale here, positive upscale. What do we got on here so far? We got a little bit coming up already. Where'd it go? The meter went up and then right down. Ooh, 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 ooh. Careful. This has got a, a wire hook here so you can kind of hook it on stuff and sometimes it hooks and uh, you don't expect it. So radio's not making any sound yet. 83 volts on it. Interesting that this went up and then came down. It's very low right now so that's like uh, 50 volts. It should start going up. Did I blow it with this thing already? can't imagine that. There's the 50. That's the input side. This would be the output side. It's not a lot lower. Good. But this is not enough voltage here. So we're still at 83. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the main supply and give it the works here. This will put us up at uh, 80, 95. Hear anything yet? Not hearing anything. I'm hearing it. It's very low there, that voltage. 100 volts. Hundred volts steady. Okay, so on this side we have a hundred volts and on the output side a little under hundred volts. We're running this at ninety-five. That's not enough? Apparently not. Okay, so we're gonna Turn it up here. I can hear the radio operating now. We're at 100 volts. Okay, so the supply is about 150 volts here. And the other side, 100 volts, so 50 volts dropping on this guy and the field coil. Uh, let's go higher voltage here because we're at 102. We can go up to. There's a hum. I don't think that hum was there before. Okay, so we're at 110. That's probably enough to, for us to fool around here. Gives us a B plus of uh, 200 and the output B plus of 125. Still very low. Uh, B plus reaching the output. I'm not sure what I'm reading here. I guess I'm, I'm reading what I'm reading is the B plus at the uh, yeah B plus so it should be slightly different from one side to the other this is the output transformer here so B plus here, um, 110 volts, and on the other side, it's just, it, like two volts less. I mean, it's the same thing. Don't know what that meant. Anybody getting hot yet? Okay, so look at the resistor. The resistor is over 100 degrees. It's not going to work out. Now you can't read the numbers here, but I'm reading this white number. It's 100 degrees. You touch that thing with your finger, you're liable to get burned. So that is a resistor that's intended to be hot, but this is really hot. That's got to be too hot. Now, what do I do? Do I let this run, run, run and see what happens to the field coil? 
the assumption is the field coil is carrying less current, but is that necessarily true? I don't know if that's necessarily true. Putting a bypass in. Get a very, very strong power supply. It's going to put out 200 volts no matter what load you put on it. So you have a field coil on it, and then you add another resistor. This won't change. They stay 100 if you have a strong power supply. Is that what's happening here? So you're going to raise the voltage on the far side, but not on the near side. Anybody understand what I'm talking about here? So on the near side, we're running at the regular. It's a little low because we're only at, well, we're in 110 volts, but I could probably get this up higher if I just raise the input, the supply voltage. Something's cooking. I think I know what it is. And the output. So we can work out the wattage here. The voltage drop on this resistor is from 220 to 120. It's 100 volts dropping on that. 100 volts dropping on it. Is it maxed out in temperature? 115, 120, it's not 130. <laughs> it's too hot. That's too hot. That's too hot. Now what happened on the speaker here? Let's see what happened. Did anything happen? Ice cold. Ice cold because it's going to take a long time for the heat to build in that. Not quite what I expected. I'm pretty sure this is a 5 watt uh, resistor. So if we calculate, let's calculate. Everybody calculate. Um, so that was a 1700 ohm resistor. So it's uh, I squared R, but we don't know the I, but we know the E. Isn't that E squared over R? E squared over R, so that would be 100 times 100. Could have done that in my head. Divided by 1700. 5.8 watts. So it's just beyond the range of this resistor. Look at the one right here. How many watts do you think that guy is? That's probably 10, 10 watts because of the large surface area on there. I need a bigger resistor to do this. I need a, uh, I have a seven watt resistor with a slightly higher resistance. Higher resistance is gonna bleed less current more current forced through the coil, more more filtering action. Now change this with a 7 watt resistor, slightly higher value, it's a 2000 ohm resistor. We'll see what we get out of that. Okay, so here's a 7 watt 2000 ohm resistor, or so it claims to be. Let's check it out. ohms. Okay. I'm going to install this resistor. If, if this doesn't work out, and I'm going to have to look at installing a couple in series or something to, to get the wattage to avoid the heat, to avoid the temperature, to avoid the temperature. That's what I want to say. Okay, I'm going to install that other resistor. We'll try again. Okay, now we're going to try the same thing here. Let me just turn down the supply a bit and get these things out of here. Seven watts, slightly higher resistance. Everything is good. Volume's down. I left the plug in. Oh, and the volume right up to maximum. Here we go. Seem okay. Everything seems okay. Okay. 
Okay. Supply voltage. Isn't that odd, eh? It comes way up and it comes way down. So it's going up because there's no current draw on the power supply. And it's going down because there's a current draw, I guess, and wow, it's down to nothing. Uh, 77 volts. Okay, that's because I cranked this down. Let's put that back up. Back up to around 80. Just doing a very low voltage thing first to make sure everything's going to explode. The explosion is, is minimal. Not that I expect anything to explode. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to crank this down and we're going to flip the switch. Now we're going to see some voltage developing here. So we're supplying the radio with 100 volts. And that gives us a 150, uh, let's call it the input, input to the field coil voltage. Should be here too. There it is. And on the other side, okay, so if we're getting, what am I on here? I'm on the 500 scale. So we're getting 140, 135 volts. And on the output side, Ooh, much less. And before we give up the full Monty, how hot are we getting here? So it's beginning to heat up. Let's see if I can just get the angle on this. You can see the redness there, and that's the resistor. Whole, the whole length is heating up. Let me just arrange this so the little plus sign goes on top. So we're at 45. That's not bad, but this is with reduced supply voltage almost 50 okay so I've got this turned down a little bit uh, yeah that's right I want to turn it down more I want to turn it up now so we're at 102 105 not much voltage not much uh, volume there let's go a little higher that doesn't sound good What's that static you sound? That crackling. Okay, now that's interference. Here it comes. Every day I have to... <laughs> I mean, it really sounds like a motor starting up, but it starts up real slow. I mean, what motor starts like that? I have no idea what this noise is. It drives me nuts. Only in the morning, it seems. Don't you think that's a weird thing? Okay, let's see where we're at now. We're at 107 volts. The input side, is, is uh, the supply is still low, 200. And the output side is only 100. We didn't really get anywhere here, did we? Okay, so I'm going to crank her up to where it would normally find itself. It were plugged into an outlet. I'm louder now. Okay, we're at 118. 118 volts. Now we're up at 250, which is better. Supposed to be 315, I think. And we're still dropping a lot. Close to 150 now. The speaker obviously works. Why am I seeing two 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 things in here? The connection is bad. I think I made a bad connection. I think my connection here is poor. So it's helping out in fact. So we're oh my gosh, it's 175 degrees. Oh I can smell it. Cut her out. Whoo! <laughs> yeah, whew. No 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 smoke evolved, but uh, there's definitely some kind of uh, vaporous stuff coming off that resistor. That is hot. That got hotter than the other one. I would have thought, you know, I mean, I know it's a, I squared R. So I've raised R, I've dropped I, 
but it's I square. It's R squared. I, it's I squared. It's I squared. It's not R squared, Jim. Oh my God. <laughs> it's I squared. So I raise the resistance. It should drop the current going through here a little bit. Ah. So I didn't calculate the wattage on this. I didn't check the voltage drop that clearly. Or if I did, I've forgotten the numbers. I'm not going to start it up again. So this is not working out so far. Uh, I don't think I'm going to guess my way into a good scenario here. So I'm going to stop for a little bit and uh, ponder the situation. Okay, so I'm going through this book, Elements of Radio Servicing. I've got three versions of this book, by the way. Great book. It uh, goes into a lot of detail. So we're talking about field coils here. It's got a couple of pages on speakers and a good part of it is about the field coil. The thing I've learned that's interesting here is there's three different ways to power the field coil in a speaker. Um, I never really thought about it, but when you think about it, it's quite, quite obvious. One way is the speaker field coil is part of the filter of the power supply. That's what this is, and that's what I think is going on in this radio, and that's what I think is going on in almost every radio I've seen. They're using the field coil to uh, be the uh, part of the uh, ripple filter in the power supply. So another, another way to do this is you power it kind of on its own. You give it its own power source, and because you and, and then you're filtering through some other method. This is a field coil. This is a choke coil, a separate choke coil here. And the idea here is you, the power supply is designed to actually supply a special power to the field coil to generate the magnetism. Never seen that. And the last way here, this is an interesting thing that's going on here. So you have a power supply filter choke coil here and the field coil is sitting here and you're already on the filtered part of the B plus. It's already filtered and you're sending some of the filtered B plus through the field coil and what you're doing is you're using the field coil as a voltage dropping resistor in a, uh, uh, a, a resistor series to give you differing voltages here that you might want. You might want this 300 volts going to the output tube and you might want the 200 going to other tubes rather than put a resistor here which could be done field coil sitting there and you get the double double bang for your buck. Um, so what's going on with this radio? Well I'm pretty sure it's this. What's going on with the speaker? The speaker that I picked, um, it's from another radio. Chances are the other radio is wired this way too because I think just about every radio I've come across, in fact everyone I've come across has been done like this. But how do I know for sure? that that speaker didn't come from a radio that was wired like this. What would the impact of that be? Well, you know, at the highest level, the speaker's not intended for the kind of use I'm trying to put it to. That's, that's a pretty high level. Probably, if this radio were looking for, what was it, 2,000 ohms on that? It was 1,700, 1,800 ohm. If this was looking for an 1,800 ohm fuel coil, this thing would have worked out just fine. What am I going to do now? So, so there's nothing in this book about uh, paralleling the field coil with a resistor. I mean, that, that's this is not the book for that. The book for that idea might be this one. How to Repair Old Time Radios. I've had this book a long, long time. So this one's full of tricks, little tricks. So I'm going to look through this book and see what it says about field coils. And does it offer a trick here that I can use? trick. Now, I'm afraid there's, there's nothing much in this book that's going to help, unfortunately, but I, I did find this interesting picture. Look at this picture. See, he's trying to start a radio with his car key. What a crazy guy. That's not going to work. You can't start a radio with a car key. So, yeah. Okay, I'm not finding any any guidance. You know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try, I'm going to try the Bing AI the uh, co-pilot. Yeah, let's try that. I just wanted to find some neutral page to be in the background. So apparently my bruiser, my bruiser, <laughs> yeah, the bruiser got updated. My browser got updated. 
But let's ignore that. I'm going to click this thing up here in the top right corner like that. This turns on the Copilot screen and shrinks the browser screen. That's what's happened here. So ask me anything. Okay, I'm, and I've been using this a fair bit and I've been writing in loud, like just talking in ordinary English as if it's a person and it's answering my questions. Let's try it here. Here we go. I have a tube radio with a speaker that has a field coil. I have substituted another speaker with a field coil with too much resistance. The original speaker field coil was 600 ohms. The, the replacement speaker is 1700 ohms. This is resulting in low B plus 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 in the radio. What should I do? Okay, did I make any typing errors there? I gotta look through quickly. I have a tube radio with a speaker that has a field coil. I have substituted another speaker with a field coil with too much resistance. The original speaker field coil was 600 ohms, the replacement is 1700. This is resulting in low B plus in the radio. What should I do? Okay. Let's see what he says. Okay, I'm going to let it all print out and then I'll scroll up and we'll read through it. This this just freaks me out when I do this, and this this thing knows exactly what I'm after. It, this, this is and it's getting better all the time, by the way. Okay, when dealing with field coil speakers and vintage tube radios, the resistance of the field coil coil is crucial for proper operation. Let's address this issue step by step. Okay, let's understanding field coil speakers. Field coil speakers use a coil of wire, the field coil, as part of the speaker's electromagnet. This coil generates the magnetic field necessary for the speaker to function. Field coil's resistance affects the current flow through it, which in turn impacts the magnetic field strength of the speaker's performance. Original speaker versus replacement speaker. You mentioned that the original speaker's field coil had a resistance of 600 ohms, while the replacement field coil measures 1700 ohms. The higher resistance of the replacement speaker means it draws less current when connected to the radio. That's, that, yeah, okay, that's a little more. The B plus voltage, high voltage supply in the radio is affected by the total current drawn by all components, including the field coil. When you replace the original speaker with a high resistance one, the overall current draw decreases, leading to a lower B plus voltage. Wow, that's not quite, that's not, it's not saying that quite right, is it? The way, the way they've put it there. Because it's really the increased voltage drop across the higher resistance field coil that's lowering the B plus. Solutions. Okay, here's some solutions. Reconnect the original speaker. <laughs> okay, I can't do that one. Modify the replacement speaker. If you want to use a replacement speaker, consider adding a resistor in series with the field coil. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's... The resistor value should be chosen to bring the resistance closer to the original. Well, you can't do that with a series resistance. That's if the field coil is low. And what about in parallel? Come on. Check the power supply circuit. Ensure the power supply circuit, including capacitors and rectifiers, is functioning correctly. So I, that's why I keep checking the input voltage to make sure it's there. Testing and adjusting. Measure the B plus with both speakers, both speakers connected. <laughs> what? If it's still low, proceed with these modifications, or the modifications. If you choose to add a resistor, calculate its value using Ohm's Law. Aim for a total resistance close to 600 ohms. Well, that's kind of what I was doing, but putting it in parallel. Test the radio after making adjustments. Oh, there's a good idea. 
Remember that modifying vintage radios requires care and attention to detail. If you are unsure, consult with an experienced technician or radio enthusiast. And as always, handle vintage equipment with care. For more visual demonstrations and insights into field call speakers, you might find this YouTube video helpful. It's, it's, you know, click on that. It's probably one of my own videos. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to explain it to myself. Well, this didn't help, but it's pretty interesting. It's, it's, it's right on the money, isn't it? Except for that one statement was just a little off down here. But uh, all laid out beautifully. Look at that. This would have really impressed my high school teachers if I had you know, answered questions like this. Wow. But it didn't help. It hasn't helped. Okay. Okay. Wow. What to do here? So my options. Keep trying different resistors until you know I get one with a high enough wattage that it doesn't get so hot. That's probably a good approach. We just keep looking for a bigger, bigger resistor, or put two or three in here in parallel. You know, higher resistances to try to spread out the heat. That's one way. Another way is uh, remove the resistor and forget about the problem. Don't worry about it. Low B plus. The radio is operating. Who cares? What the heck? It's never going to be beautiful anyway. The cabinet's in trouble. The, the, this is not going to be a beautiful radio. I'm not trying to turn this into a thing of beauty. Um, leave it the way it is. The problem with that is we don't know how hot that speaker field coil is going to get. And my impression is it's going to get really hot in the long run. Too hot. Is it possible that the low B plus and the overheating of the resistors is really because this thing is drawing too much B plus current because of other component problems? That's an interesting question. That's a very interesting question. We had one capacitor smoke over here. It didn't smoke for fun. It was drawing current and that would have been pulling down the power supply potentially yeah, that's that's a good pun. Potentially pulling down the power supply voltage. Um, and I don't remember what the measurement was on the f on the uh, on the original capacitor voltage. So yeah, if there's something going on in this radio which is really pulling the B plus current, that would result in a higher temperature of this resistor and a lower reading on the far side. The schematic is full of lines where it says how much current is flowing uh, on the schematic. Let's just take a look and kind of loosely add those up and just see what, what kind of current is supposed to be flowing here. Okay, uh, we, we need a schematic. I think this is the best one here. Um, so on here are currents. See, look, 4.5 milliamps, 40 milliamps on the output tube. So there's 80 milliamps right there. 80 that's about another 10, so we're at 90, uh, uh, 90. These are all going to be small. They, they show the cathode current on every tube here. 15. So where did we get to? So we're up around 100, 110 milliamps. And they, yeah, you can put it here. So we're looking over 100 milliamps, uh, without a doubt. Let's just do that again. I just want to, because there is a doubt. <laughs> 80, 90, uh, 100, 115, 120. Let's call it 125 milliamps. And that's just through the tubes. There can also be current flows through resistors and other stuff, I think. But that would be the bulk of it. 125 milliamps. That's what this radio thinks it's sucking out of this power supply. Or does it right there? 125 milliamps. There it is right there. For crying out loud. At 315 volts, and we're not getting there. That could again be because of too much current being drawn. Is that possible? If I'm measuring the voltage on this capacitor, which is the one I replaced, or the one that smoked, then I'm reading this, but it's not 315. Could it be pulled down? Be That would be, where would the voltage be dropping? 
if you pull harder and harder and harder on this. Yeah, you know what? That's not going to explain it. Because yeah, that's not going to that's not that's not happening. It's not excess current going here. If anything, it's minimal current going here. So so why this is 315 not 315? Possible answer is this tube is got is is old and there's a voltage drop, uh, an increased voltage drop in it. So that's possible. So that might explain the uh, lower the 250 here. That would mean this tube is probably uh, not long for this world either. Okay, um, you know we still have the replacement capacitors sitting here. These guys could be bad actors. I don't know. They look fine, but so did the one that smoked look fine. Everything looks fine until it doesn't. 125 milliamps. Let's get the calculator out here. Okay, calculator. So we're talking 125 milliamps through through 600 ohms. So what would that be? 125 milliamps. So that would be 0.125 times. 0.125 times 600. <sighs> 10 watts. Well, well, what did I just calculate? I calculated the amount of wattage expected to be uh, sustained. It's not quite the way, way, to, way to say it. By the field coil. The field coil is trying to throw off 10 watts. A lot like the sun, the, 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 the small heat production inside that coil is building up inside. That's why 10 watts is leading to a pretty high temperature over time. Now, since the voltage over here never went down, it's always at 250. The field coil is feeling the same pressure, even with the resistor there. So putting this in isn't really cutting the current down in the field coil. It's just giving another pass so more current can get get there. That doesn't it doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> God, come on, you put something in parallel with something, more 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 current goes. Well, maybe not, because the power supply is strong enough to stand up its voltage at 250. Well, if I'm going to try to dissipate 10 watts, then we're going to end up with 5 in the field coil, 5 here. But I put this resistor in, and this went way high. Like, way high. How did that happen? They're the same resistance. So the power supply is looking at the coil and looking at the resistor and saying they're the same thing. So it's splitting its current. I don't know. I, 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 uh, this is a 7 watt resistor and it's just nowhere near to doing the job. I have to put a small fan in here. Blow air on it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to do here. Like I said, my, one option is just ignore the whole problem and, and carry on. You know, now that's interesting. If the problem is a dramatically high draw of current somewhere in this radio through something, a bad resistor, bad capacitor, or just the summation of all the little currents that are leaking where they shouldn't, drawing more through the power supply, drawing more through the field coil. You know, the way, no, I was going to say, the way, way to find that out is to just break the power supply circuit so it doesn't actually feed into the radio, but then you just get open circuit voltage. That, that's not going to tell you much. Uh, how can you tell if the radio is drawing too much? Well, if you had the proper speaker in there, you could probably make a measurement and draw some conclusion, but 
I, I, I gotta stop for a bit. I, I'm really, I'm really, I really don't know what to do here. Hmm. Well, I gave it some time, went outside, started messing around with weeds in my yard, hoping some better idea would come up on how to go forward with this, and nothing has come up other than to try smaller resistors in here, which seems absurd to me. But uh, So I'm going to leave it like this for now, and uh, wor I'll worry about it uh, tomorrow morning. I got other things to worry about for the rest of today. Not really. See ya.